Okay, before I lose daylight here, I'm going to go over real quick uh, how to use some stone tools. I decided to go ahead and uh, make some stone tools and start using them right away instead of waiting till later. So I'm going to go over how to process the uh, Phragmites reed with the stone tools I have. Now this is uh, three different sizes of, uh, of the tool that I use to process arrows. This is heat treated stone, this is heat treated stone, and this is raw stone here. The largest one is raw, I believe. But uh, I'll show you how I use these. And this is dead standing Phragmites. I think I was saying Phragmite before. And I just saw a video that kind of showed me I was pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> so this is a Phragmites reed, dead standing. What I'm going to do is uh, shave the nodes a little bit. And all that is is a to buy face. That makes quick work of these nodes. There's a lot of steps involved in making an arrow. I'm going to go out of order a little bit and I might skip a few steps, but eventually I'll cover all the steps. You can see I have a fire in the background that's for straightening. I'm not sure if I'll have time to do much straightening. I'm going to scrape off this uh, mold after I straighten. But uh, I'm going to work on the knock first. And uh, normally I would I would have the uh, the shaft straightened out and. Uh, spined and and all that before I do the knock, but uh, I'm going to do the knock just so I can show you. And I use this as a saw as well. I don't know if you can see. And I'm not putting very much pressure on it. That reed was a little thin there. Let's see if this is better. It, all it is is a straight stone edge. I'll show you what that is later. I've got a burin on this side and on that side. I'll show you what all that is later. So this uh, this little knot here, I guess you call it, or a stem root, is where I know where to start the, uh, the knock, and it just cuts right through like a saw. It's no coincidence that the uh, this is just as wide as the string is. And it makes a V-knock. Sorry if there's a lot of wind going on. That's pretty much it for the knock, except for sanding it. 
you can make the bottom a little square if you want so that the uh, it reduce the tendency for the uh, the node to split and all I do is uh, sand it after this and uh, I have a little stone for sanding somewhere around here I'll just use this one anyway any stone will work I've got some sandstone that I use this is just one of my hard hammer stones Any rough stone will work. And that's pretty much it. I can do a little more sanding, but uh, that looks good enough. There's a lot of uh, mold on here, and I just this is a scraper in here, this little indentation in here. I just flaked in one direction, so that the back side here is very sharp, and I just use it for scraping. I don't know if you can see that some of that mold is coming off. That's just simple. It's very simple woodworking techniques. I can either use this for scraping or I can use the burinated side for scraping. This gives a much finer shaving. I don't know if you can see the shavings coming off. The burin gives you a 90 degree edge, or close to a 90 degree edge, which is very sharp. And it's excellent for scraping. And it leaves a smooth finish. Normally I scrape off all the waxy outer coating on the reed from this part anyway because that's where I paint the, uh, the shaftment. And uh, if you still have that waxy coating, it, the paint won't stick. Did you find a good spot on here that doesn't have any sharp edges sticking out? And just scrape with that. Here is the before. I'm not putting much pressure at all. Just enough to take off that outer coating. There you go. That's how you process the uh, the knock end of the arrow. That's it.